With the advent of the internet, we were introduced to a different world of entertainment, unlike anything we have previously imagined. Who would have thought that reaction videos and streaming video games would be something that others would like to watch? XQC is a dynamic individual that chose to capitalize on this opportunity in an emerging market such as this. Today, we're going to be exploring what got him to the very top of the streaming game. First up, gaming. League of Legends, a 2009 multiplayer online battle arena game which was both developed and published by Riot Games initially caught XQC's eye. Felix Lengiel, XQC's real name, decided to fully commit to his streamer identity and made his username XQC LOL. While he had an enjoyable time playing competitively, he didn't achieve nearly the level of success as he did playing Overwatch. Overwatch was a game developed and published by Blizzard Entertainment, and here's where XQC got his rise to stardom. He mainly played the character Winston, and that can be seen to still be his online avatar on certain digital content platforms like YouTube. The streamer achieved a great deal of success and was actively followed by millions of people who were drawn to his personality and his competitive spirit. For Overwatch, he even changed his username to XQC Overwatch, which is why some of his fans call him Mr. Cow. Next up, eSports. XQC began his career as an Overwatch competitive player in a small-scale online tournament as a tank player for teams that he played in. His primary role as a tank player was to absorb the damage from enemy teams and protect his own in the process. XQC's position required him to be an opportunist in the rounds that he played, creating a chance for his team to strike. In October of 2016, he was picked by Denial eSports, which is a multi-game eSports organization. After some months of playing with his team, XQC was met with a bit of bad luck as the group disbanded. The former team members operated independently under their own roster, which was later then called Arc 6. The streamer began so early in the Overwatch journey that he had a chance to truly make a name for himself in the community. How early did he join the community exactly, though? Well, the team competed right in Season 0 of Overwatch Contenders. So, XQC finally found his calling as a tank player in the competitive ecosystem of Overwatch. But competition breeds an unhealthy, toxic lifestyle. Unfortunately, XQC fell prey to just that. His competitive drive increased to an unhealthy capacity. Capacity. In his own words, he got careless with his sleep, and he even developed poor eating habits. The streamer was living such an incredibly damaging lifestyle that it impacted him far beyond the world of gaming as well. He failed to keep up with his friends and his family. Winning became an obsession, and if you were XQC, losing just wasn't an option. If he felt his performance in a game was not up to his own self-imposed expectations, he began to challenge himself. How did he do this? He set everything in his life aside and dove headfirst into competitive games until he was satisfied with his performance again. Lengiel had honed his gaming skills to such a degree that, despite losing with his team, he was awarded the most valuable player accolade at a tournament that he played at. Clearly, the man was driven to a level which his peers just couldn't reach. He was making plays and highlights that were eventually watched by millions around the world. And now, childhood discovery. From an early age, Lengiel was impressionable in the worst of ways. During his early years before his achieved fame, he would go online to casually play against others in no competitive capacity. It was like any other kid with a love for gaming. It was an escape. However, when you go online, and you're exposed to a world beyond the one that you just play in. Lengiel noticed in multiplayer lobbies that many children who would connect to his games in that region had, uh, colorful language. Lengiel would learn these words, and he wouldn't shy away from using any of this newfound vocabulary on campus. As you can assume, that really didn't go over too well with his teachers. However, little is known about the consequences that he actually suffered for that. But I guess we can go a little easy on the kids, since we're a little guilty of having a foul mouth at some point in our lives. Come on. Up next, controversy. The streamer was not by any means easy to get behind or endorse in the years to come, either for fans and brands alike. He's been a controversial figure in the public space, and he's found himself suspended for certain remarks that he's made. One such incident took place where the streamer made derogatory, homophobic remarks on his personal Twitch channel during a casual stream towards a competitive esports player from the Outlaws team, Austin Muma Wilmont, who happens to be openly gay. This landed the player in some hot water in his professional career, in the public eye also, as well as with brands who were uncomfortable continuing a professional arrangement with him. Lengiel, after receiving sanctions at different points over the course of his career, switched to primarily making content on Twitch, where he would stream for over nine hours in a day. The man was committed, to say the least, and wasn't looking to back down or take a break from entertaining his viewers despite controversy. He kept his content fresh and engaging throughout his time on Twitch, embracing new games that were trending at the time as well. These included the likes of Among Us, Call of Duty, Fortnite, and many more. In November of 2020, XQC was a part of a Fall Guys tournament, another game that was trending at the time. However, he was unfortunately caught attempting to stream style another creator. This creator was Dr. Lupo, and XQC was essentially watching his stream in order to figure out where Lupo was during the game, which resulted in XQC getting the win multiple times over Lupo, which raised many eyebrows during the Twitch Rivals tournament at GlitchCon. The organization who was in charge of conducting the event, however, took notice, and they certainly didn't stop there. They needed to make an example out of XQC. 
FTC. GlitchCon's Twitter account came out with a public statement that day and tweeted that Leng Yao will from that moment on be banned for six months, effective immediately. This wasn't Leng Yao's first rodeo at Twitch Rivals. In fact, this sanction marked the fourth time that he was banned from Twitch Rivals at, at that point in time. Now for hypocrisy and critics. Leng Yao's controversy extends even further. He's been called out, actually, on a queue a few occasions for being a hypocrite and not being true to his word or the values that he claims to promote. Leng Yao was a strong critic of gambling in his past and has been very vocal about he, how he believes gamblers are, in his words, scummy. Many internet personalities, particularly streamers, have found themselves in career-ending controversy over promoting gambling. The audience was convinced that Leng Yao seemed to understand the negative implications of this indulgence. This was, of course, until he himself was gambling during his streams, which he suggested was meant to be harmless and just for fun. When he was rightfully called out for his behavior and criticized by fans and the public alike, he replied that he wasn't serious about it. It didn't help his case in the slightest that he was in fact sponsored by a website for his gambling as well. Yeah, that's really not a good look for Leng Yao there, by any means. Critics of his habits pointed out exactly why this was harmful. Leng Yao's fan base mostly consisted of young teenagers who could very easily be inspired by him to imitate his controversial behavior. Whether that would be through cheating tactics to win games, gambling away all of their parents' money, or simply being abusive towards others, irrespective of ethnicity or sexuality. Clearly, there was a potential of children being highly negatively influenced. And finally, appeal. Leng Yao ticks all the right boxes to engage the international streaming audience. He rages at losses when he blames the game for being broken rather than recognizing his lack of skill, which doesn't fail to be recorded and clipped for entertaining highlight videos. And then this rage comes in the form of shouting at the game, his teammates, or even the viewers who are harmlessly just watching him suffer emotionally. Hilarious, really. Leng Yao also really loves to stay current and refuses to limit himself to one medium of entertainment. He's seen reacting to current events that take place in the world in the form of reaction videos to content. Viewers who don't usually watch his stream video games love to see his reactions nonetheless. Perhaps it's his unfiltered approach, simply saying how he feels regardless of how insensitive it might come across. This might be why, unlike others who have attempted to branch out into the reaction space, Leng is one of the very few who's actually succeeded in becoming a popular personality in it. It definitely helps Leng further that he remains open to playing games his audience is interested in watching him play. That competitive spirit we saw also has been diluted ever so slightly, and maybe that's why he, you know, doesn't mind picking up a game and being bad at it for a change. You know, as long as it keeps people happy and the streaming numbers up, right? And that's a wrap for this video. Are you an XQC fan? And if so, why? Did you learn something new about him today? Let us know in the comment section below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.